Greetings everyone. So today I want to talk about five things you might want to consider upgrading this year, 2021, and two things you might want to consider holding off on until probably 2022. Okay, so we're at the beginning of 2021, and I want to recommend some devices that you might want to consider upgrading this year. So I got five on my list, and one of the first one you might want to consider upgrading is your router. Now last year I made a video talking about you should wait and hold off instead of jumping on the Wi-Fi 6 AX bandwagon. But since that video, a lot of things has changed and a lot of new products are taking advantage of that AX aka Wi-Fi 6 connection. The newest phones, the newest tablets and newest TV and a lot of other new devices are taking advantage of that Wi-Fi 6. So if you've been holding off, this is the year you might want to consider doing that upgrade. Now, if you need a new router, I would not recommend you buy anything that's in the Wi-Fi 5 range or anything lower than that, even if it's available on the market. I would still go for the Wi-Fi 6 because things are starting to convert more and more to that Wi-Fi 6 signal. And bandwidth is getting larger. A lot of these companies are giving you more bandwidth, even though they're charging you more on their bill, but at least they're giving you more bandwidth. We're talking about anywhere from up to like 500 megabits or even more all the way up to a gig. But also our homes are getting bombarded with internet connected things. We got smart bulbs, we got fire stick, we got smart TVs, we got all kinds of different smart stuff. So all of these items are trying to connect to your router and the Wi-Fi 6 router is the kind of router you would need to handle that load because it's designed for that purpose to handle more load and to give you more bandwidth so if you're thinking about buying a new router make sure you look for your wi-fi 6 router sometimes it's labeled ax and if you're still using an old router now it's time for you to move up to something even better so why not go for the wi-fi 6 you're going to see a better performance I'm not saying it's going to increase your speed because you're still limited to your ISP, which is your internet service provider, but it will keep things like your smart bulb, for instance, stay connected to your Wi-Fi. Now there's two flavors of the Wi-Fi router. You got a standalone unit and then you got the mesh system. Now I like the mesh system because it gives you more coverage. And I always try to recommend it to people who have multi-level homes or you have a large home where you have the router on one side of the house and you can hardly get signal on the other side of the house. So that mesh creates that connection to broaden the field of Wi-Fi signal so you can keep your devices connected. But if you have a small dwelling, say one single level, small house, maybe one or two bedroom, or even a studio apartment or something like that, a single router will do the job. So whether you go with the single router or the mesh system, it's all gonna depend on the size of your home. Now, if you have any questions on what to choose, which route to go, or any other questions dealing with routers, leave it in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. The next thing that you want to consider upgrading is your computer or laptop, depending on which one you're using. Now, if you're running anything with Windows 7, if you still have a system that's still running Windows 7, it is really time for you to start upgrading to Windows 10. Windows 7 has been abandoned by Microsoft. So therefore, you're not getting any more security updates. You're not getting any software updates. So you don't want to run any software on your system that can be attacked so easily because there's no software patches like security or software updates that's going to protect you from being hacked. Also, you're going to see better performance. Now, you don't need a ton of money to get a new system you can get whatever is in your budget because that new system is going to run much better than the one that you have right now, that old system that's running the older software. You have gotten your money worth out of that system and it's time to take it out to the dumpster and get you something more updated. As a matter of fact, just take the hard drive out of it and use it as an external drive and keep your files on it and then you can just transfer them to the new system later on and then you can put it in the dumpster or just recycle it and you might get a couple of dollars back just for recycling the parts the next thing you might want to consider upgrading is your cell phone now if you have an older phone that you can't update the software on you know it tells you that you need a newer phone to run the software or if you update the phone to the latest software and you notice that the phone is running much slower 
is because it cannot handle that newer software. It'll let you install it, but doesn't mean that it's gonna run real well. So the phone is telling you that it has passed its prime and it's time for you to move on to something else, something newer. Now that doesn't mean that you have to buy the latest phone of this model year. You can get one that's a previous model or even a little further back, but it will still be newer than the phone that you probably have for the last, I don't know, five, seven years. That newer phone will also come with better security measures to keep your phone more secure. Most of the latest phone have fingerprint readers. A lot of them have face ID, so they give you that extra level of security to make sure your phone is protected versus just the regular pin number or even just swiping to connect the dots. Plus, if you're a person that likes to take pictures, you might want to have your pictures to come out a little bit more crisp and clear and more beautiful looking. Well, that's one of the areas that a lot of these phone manufacturers are focusing on. They're focusing on making your pictures come out more high quality, more high def. That also goes for video. You can do up to 4K videos on a lot of these newer phones. And depending on which side of the bridge you're on, you know, if you're on the Android side, you probably can add extra storage by adding an additional SD card. If you're with the Apple crowd, that's not gonna happen. You just make sure you buy a phone that has the most capacity that you can afford. And there's always the cloud. So if your phone run out of storage, you can store most of that stuff in the cloud anyway. Number four, your tablet. Okay, so depending on which side of the bridge you're on, Android or Apple. Apple pretty much set the bar as far as it comes to tablet. You know, they have a good ecosystem. Everything works together. Their apps are designed for the tablet and not something ported over. On the Android side, it's a little bit different. You know, some of the apps are designed for the phone and it's not formatted for the Android tablet. If you have an older tablet and you know how old your tablet is, it's time for you to come up a level. And if you want to come up a level, it depends on how much you want to spend. Apple has a wide variety of different ones you can choose from, from a lower cost one to a more expensive one. That's the same way on the Android side. Now on the Android side, Samsung to me has the best tablets. I just purchased one myself and I've been doing research on it and I realized it's one of the best tablets out there as far as Androids because it does a whole lot of fancy footwork. And I just purchased one. I'm gonna do a little review on it and tell you the reason why I get it late, much later. But you might wanna consider updating your tablet if you have an older one. You're gonna get a little more benefit because the newer tablets, you can actually use the pen, you know, which some people call the stylus, which means you can use it to write on the screen, make notes, and you can actually use it to just write out some things. And then the software that's built into the tablet can convert it into text so you don't have to sit there and type it out if you don't want to. The cameras are not as great as on your cell phone, but it's much better than the older tablets. So if you have an older tablet that's running a little bit too slow, you know, you click on the icon and you pause for a second and then eventually it pops up on the screen and then you see the little thing spinning around and it's not loading or all that stuff, fancy stuff going on. Well, guess what? It's time for you to upgrade. So consider upgrading your tablet this year if possible. Now, just like your smartphone, you don't have to get the latest and greatest 2021 version. You can get one that's a little bit older, a 2020 or a 2019. But if you have anything like five or seven years ago, as far as tablet, it's time for you to step it up a notch. All right, so consider upgrading your tablet. And the last on the what you should upgrade this year 2021 list. We still have two more to go, two that I think you should still wait on, but let's cover the last one that you should consider upgrading, and that's your TV. Now we already know plasma TV went out of style a long time ago. Now I'm not judging you, you know, I'm not saying take your plasma TV and toss it out the door, but you're kind of missing out on a lot of features that's available on the newer TV. You know, the 4K technology, the HDMI ARC, the HDMI EARC, you know, all those technologies that's built into these latest TV, 
HDR10 and all these other fancy technology that's built into these newer TV. So you're kind of missing out. Now I know you like your TV. You know it's still running. You click the button, it comes on, no issue. But if you're running any TV that's still a plasma TV or a 720p, even a 1080p, it's time to move up the ladder a little bit because TVs have gotten a whole lot cheaper. And I'm talking about the 4K TVs because those were a very expensive TV back in the day. Now it's a whole lot cheaper. As a matter of fact, I would recommend that you always get a sound bar because it's going to improve the sound on your movies and TV shows that you're going to be watching. So try to upgrade to a 4K TV this year, one that you can afford within your budget, especially if you have a TV that's a plasma TV, 720p or even 1080p. Trust me, you're going to see the big difference in picture quality when you move up to that next level. Okay, so here are the two things that you don't want to worry about right now. I mean, if it gets better as the year go by, yes, but I wouldn't put it on my radar for 2021. I would wait till at least 2022 or beyond, depending on how fast the technology develop. The first one is 5G. Now I know 5G is brand new. You've been seeing a lot of commercial on it on TV, but it's not that widespread yet. There's a lot of cities where it's still not available. So you need to check within your region, your city, your state, and see if it's even available. Now the phones are on the market, but it doesn't mean that the antennas are everywhere. Now there's some phone companies like T-Mobile and Verizon and AT&T, you know, in the U.S. that, you know, say, well, we got more 5Gs here and there, but it doesn't mean that it's in your actual area. The area that I'm living in right now, there's no 5G. So even though they say they're covering this, the entire states and all that stuff, they're telling you that right now because they want you to go out and buy the latest phone. But don't get falling to buying stuff that you can't take advantage of. Eventually, it's going to get more widespread because 4G, you know, at one point wasn't in every area. 4G LTE, all that stuff wasn't everywhere but eventually it grew. Now if 5G is in the area that you're currently living in now, you can go ahead and get it and enjoy it. But be aware that when you leave your area and go to another area, you're not gonna get that 5G signal. It's gonna drop down to whatever signal is in that area that it can connect to. So until you go back home to your area or you go to another area that has 5G, you're gonna have spotty signal connection because 5G is going to work here, but it's not going to work here. It's not going to be blanket all over. And like I said, it all depends on which phone company you're with. Some of them say they offer more 5G versus other. So you'd have to do your own little research. But do that research before you run out and buy the latest 5G phone. So I'm going to leave that one up to you to decide if you really want to go down that road. My recommendation is wait. And the second one is 8K. Now, I know there's a lot of 8K TVs, not a bunch, not a great amount, but there's quite a few 8K TVs on the market right now. And I know they're pushing them out to you and they're shoving it in your face. Hey, here's the latest 8K TV. And I'm pretty sure they're going to have more coming out in 2021. But the problem is the content is not there yet. There's not a lot of 8K content out on the market to take advantage of those 8K TVs. Now, if I buy an 8K TV, I want to see some 8K TV quality movies and TV shows to really take advantage of that TV so I can say, wow, this is awesome. Now, it's going to take the 4K and try to upscale it to make it look like 8K, but it's not the true 8K content. Now, 8K content will eventually roll out. I mean, as the technology advance, then the media will take advantage of it eventually. It's just like the phones are 5G right now. We just have to get the phone company to get those antennas spread out more often and closer to your area so you can take advantage of it. So the 8K will eventually grow and get better and we will take advantage of that 8K technology. But right now I would not buy an 8K TV. I would just hold off until the media, you know, as far as your streaming, like if I can stream 8K quality video from Amazon or Netflix, then 
you can actually take advantage of that TV that you pay so much for. Because the 8K TVs are very expensive right now. As a matter of fact, you can buy a house full of TV pretty much for every room with that price. A lot of 4K TV can be purchased for the price of one 8K TV. But if you just want to have the latest and greatest and it's within your budget, no big deal, go ahead and get it, it's up to you but you're not going to get the full advantage until the content is really starting to be pumped out there for you to take advantage of. My recommendation on this one too is to just wait. All right, so if you have any questions on any of the things that I recommend you upgrade to or the ones that you don't need to be upgraded to right now, leave it in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.